good olive oil is extremely delicious and incredibly good for you. In fact, you could practically put it in your medicine chest. But good olive oil is very expensive, so you need to be really careful when you're buying a bottle. What you must do is look at the labels. A good olive oil will have the words, extra virgin, first cold press on the label. And also somewhere on the label, either in the front or in the back, it will tell you what the harvest date is or a best if used by date. Because good olive oil only lasts for about 18 months after the harvest. Welcome to the world of Italy. Please join me on a tour that starts in the southernmost part of Italy and goes all the way up to the north of Modena. Our journey begins at the heel of Italy. Most of you are familiar with the country of Italy, how it's shaped as a boot. If you started way down at the bottom of the heel and drove just about 90 miles north, you get to the beautiful city of Bari, which is located right on the Adriatic Sea. We're at the city of Bari and we travel just about 10 miles to the town of Andria. And Andria is where we find our first olive oil. The olive oil that I have here is from the town of Andria and it comes from a very specific olive. Most Italian orchards that feature olive oil have blends of different oils. But this family, the Morelia family, found that if they use just the Coratina olive in one of their oils, it is extremely flavorful, very intense in flavor, and contains more antioxidants, they believe, than any of the other olives. And this we call the Morelia Intenso. We have another flavor of olive oil, it is a blend of both the Coratina olive and another olive, and that we call Delicato. Now we're going to travel just about 70 miles north, and this geographic area is just about 65 to 70 miles north of Andria. We approach the Gargano Peninsula, which is very interesting. The Gargano, just to give you an idea of where we are, if you were in the city of Naples and you went right across the Apennine Mountains to the Adriatic Sea, there's that spur that you're, you might be familiar with that is just above the heel of Italy. And right there on that spur, there's a beautiful mountain range and it's called the Gargano Peninsula. And we are the very, very first town on the Gargano. And the town that we are right in is the town of Manfredonia and the olive oil we get is the Clementi olive oil. The first olive oil that we're going to feature today is the Montagna Sacra, known as the Sacred Mountain. And this olive oil comes from very, very ancient trees. In fact, I'd like to show you some of them. This particular orchard is on the top, of, almost on the top of this mountain, which starts right at the foot of the Adriatic Sea. The trees, if you can get a closer look at them, are ancient. They are very, very old, hundreds of years old. And if you look at the first one, there, is, there are just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these old, old trees. And in the next photo, you'll see my wife and I standing on either side of one of these ancient trees that is somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 or 700 years old. The fruit from these olives, when picked, when they're totally ripened, is a very, very buttery flavor with a hint of spice in the finish. And this particular olive oil is a certified organic olive oil, which the olives are picked as close as they can be from the time that it is fully ripened crushed and bottled all within 24 hours. And you can see my wife and I down here at the Frontoia, which is actually located right at the bottom of the mountain, right off the seashore. And what you see in the background are these big granite stones that are actually used to grind down the olives. And now if we switch up to this picture over here, you might say, what could this possibly be? Well, the machinery that's used to crush the olives 
and to actually get the olives to change the olive from the state it's in, that olive state, and the actual olive oil has to go through a centrifugal process in which the separation takes place between olives, the hard pit, the water that's coming from it, and actually the olive oil. And you can see right here this process in this, and in this, and finally the final product as the beautiful green olive oil comes out from those beautiful first cold press extra virgin olives. Now, I mentioned when we started the trip to the Clementi farm, the Montagna Sacra, we also feature a second olive oil, and this is called Ray Manfredi. The Ray Manfredi is an orchard located literally on the seashore of the Adriatic. Why is that important? Because the soil composition is very different from the mountainous soil. There are trace minerals from the sea that give it un its uniqueness. And the olives, unlike the other olives, are not picked when they're totally ripened. These are picked seven to 10 days before they are ripened. And the taste of these olives is more of a fruity, is more fruity in nature. And when you swallow it on the back of your palate, you will feel a nice peppery bite. Wonderful on salads. Now we're going to go north. We're getting in our cars and we're driving approximately 450 miles directly north to the most one of the most beautiful cities in all of Italy, Florence, Firenze. And to the south of Firenze, just about 15 to 18 kilometers, is the Pasquino Farm. Now the Pasquini Farm has been in operation since the 1800s. The family has been producing wonderful extra virgin olive oil. And this year, for the first time, we met Antonio Pasquini and we tasted his oils. And this one proved to be one of the finest in any parts of Italy all of this year. The taste from this one is certainly a traditional Tuscan flavor that you feel in the back of your palate. This is a real traditional Tuscan olive oil which is both fruity, has a wonderful uh, peppery bite at the end, and as yet is sweet. A wonderful olive oil. Now we have one other stop in the area of olive oil, and that's to our friend's beautiful farm just north of the city of Florence. Actually, if you stood in front of the Domo in Florence and you look to the northeast, just 26 uh, kilometers northeast of Florence, and that would be that first mountain to your northeast, the very top 300 acres is the Alago Farm. And again, this Alago Farm has been in the family for a number of generations, and the fruit from these olives is one of the finest of all Tuscan flavors. This one is one of our very, very favorites, and it doesn't have a very, very strong peppery bite, but it is a very full, fruity, flavor that you cannot mistake from being anything but a fine Tuscan olive oil. But our journey is not over yet. We have one more stop on this Italian journey and we're going to the city of Modena, which is just 70 miles north of Florence. So let's get back into our cars, travel up the road, and we're going to this ancient city where balsamic vinegar originates almost 3,000 years ago. Before I show you these oils, I need to share some information that we learned about nine years ago when we first went to the city of Modena. Balsamic vinegars are made in many different ways and depending on who the farmer is and who the person is making the balsamic vinegar, that very often determines what that balsamic vinegar is going to be tasting like. I am sure that you've tasted many different types. This one is truly exceptional. This farmer has had this particular recipe in his family archives for generation after generation after generation. And he is one of the finest, if not one of the, fi the finest, balsamic vinegar in all of Modena. He starts the process off using the Tribbiano grape, the Lambrusco grape, and the Sangiovese. You might be familiar with those grapes. They're wonderful Italian wine grapes. But we're not making wine, we're making balsamic vinegar. So he takes those grapes, he crushes them, and if you look in this first photo, you'll see 
these wonderful grapes being boiled down. He actually boils this down for 72 hours. And after that three-day period, he's ready to take it and put it into these oak wood barrels. But I'd like you to just look at some of these other photos to give you an idea of what these barrels are all about. If you take a look at these photos, you will see in each of the barrels there are white cheesecloths covering each of the barrels. Why is that? Because balsamic vinegar needs to breathe. If you're going to make an authentic artisanal balsamic vinegar, you have to follow the way it was originally intended to be and how it was created originally. And what he does is after the three years in this barrel, uncorked, he's ready for his first balsamic. But there's one other thing that you need to know. Where does he store this balsamic vinegar? Now, if we were using those wonderful uh, three grapes, the Tribbiano, the Lambrusco, and Sangiovese, and we were making a wine, what would we do? We would cork it, and then we would bottle it, and we would put it in the cellar where it's nice and cool. But if you're making an artisanal, authentic balsamic vinegar, it's just the opposite process. You recall, you never cork it. You put a cheesecloth where the cork goes. What else do you do? You don't put it in the coolest part of the house. You put it in the warmest part of the house. So where are these photos actually taken? All of these photos are taken in his attic, the third floor of the farmhouse. And that's how they made it 2,000 years ago. That's how they made it 3,000 years ago. And this is how this man makes it today in his own farmhouse. So we're going to look at the first balsamic vinegar. And this is known as our Bordeaux label. Now the Bordeaux label has been crushed, boiled down for 72 hours, and it has been in the oak wood barrel for three years. What would I do with this beautiful three-year-old? I would use it on salads. It is just about perfect on any salad. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of balsamic. You've never tasted anything like this. Now we're going to our second balsamic. I need to go back to the photos because I would like to show you something. Technique. The technique of the farmer in producing this beautiful balsamic vinegar. What did he do? After three years in this oak wood barrel, he transfers the balsamic to cherry wood barrels, to uh, ash barrels, to mulberry barrels, and to chestnut barrels. It's the art of this man that makes the balsamic extraordinary. So the second balsamic that we're featuring has been in these other barrels for up to, but not quite, 10 years. This is our Farmacia Bordeaux. Now the Farmacia Bordeaux, as I mentioned, has been in the barrels somewhere between eight and 10, but not quite 10. And we would use this on any entree anything that you can think of, whether it be fish, meat, pork, vegetable, you would take this beautiful condiment and just before you serve it, you drizzle just a third of a teaspoon on anything. That preserves the integrity of this incredible flavor. And our last balsamic that we're demonstrating today is our Farmacia Oro. Again, I'd like to remind you the multiple barrels started off, all of them start off the same way. Three years in the oak wood, then into the cherry wood, then to the ash, the mulberry, and the chestnut. But now this one has been aged the longest. Minimum of 10 years, maximum of almost but not quite 12 years. Now what would you do with a 12-year-old balsamic, or almost 12-year-old balsamic? This is known as our Farmacia Oro. And this balsamic is truly exceptional. This is the balsamic that I would put on strawberries, peaches, pears. You want to really put a smile on somebody's face. Just take six fresh figs, cut them in half, put them on a plate drizzle just two drops of this Farmacia Oro on each half of those figs. 
you will see smiles you have never seen before. And if you really want to be exciting, take some beautiful little shards of a good Parmesan Reggiano and literally drop, just drizzle, just one drop of this Farmacia Oro. And you will see expressions and you will hear expressions that you've never heard before. A truly wonderful balsamic vinegar. And that concludes our trip from southern Italy to northern Italy. Bon appetit. These olive oils are terrific, poured over fresh, lightly cooked vegetables or raw vegetables, or drizzled over meats or seafood right off the grill, or in a pasta sauce that I make. It's a very simple sauce. It's one of my favorites. It's called pasta in fretta, which means pasta in a hurry. To make this, you would take about a cup of extra virgin olive oil, and you're going to very lightly saute about um, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. A couple of cloves of chopped fresh garlic. Saute for maybe uh, about a minute or two minutes, just until the garlic absorbs all of the olive oil. Then you're going to add some fresh chopped up raw tomatoes. And you're going to continue to saute for about three minutes or just until the tomatoes and the garlic have started to absorb all of the olive oil and the flavors have melded. After that's finished, you're going to add some fresh chopped herbs. You can use basil or tarragon or any combination. And all together you are cooking the sauce for maybe six or seven minutes. And when all of the flavors have blended, you're going to toss your pasta with the sauce. And finish off by sprinkling some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. And there you have it. Pasta in fretto. Buon appetito. Children love pasta with good extra virgin olive oil. And it's so good for them. For more information, log on to famousfoods.com Olio de Melli, or Write to us at oleodemelli at comcast.net or call us at 508-636-8047. That's 508-636-8047.